Hello, it's Scott Manley here. This weekend, we expect SpaceX to perform their in-flight abort test for their Crew Dragon capsule. Not only will this be spectacular, showing a crewed vehicle escaping from a failing rocket, it should also be straight up explosive. This rocket will be traveling faster than the speed of sound, deep inside the atmosphere, it is almost certainly going to break. In fact, uh, Elon specifically or well, stated that it will probably be destroyed by dragon fire. I think it's more likely to just simply be torn apart by the aerodynamics of the situation. But yes, this is happening on the 18th of January. Uh, we're not sure about the exact time, but the, um, the, the closures for the water areas happen about 7.15 and NASA will start the broadcast at 7 45 so probably about eight o'clock which means if you're on the west coast of the us like me then you have to get up about 5 a.m if you want to see this uh, there's a whole lot of people with cool cameras that are going to be there to document this because intentionally destroying a rocket booster as part of a test is going to be is going to be something i want to see from every single angle and at every single frame rate and spectrum and whatever but obviously we also want to see the crew capsule escape and land and get recovered swiftly by the team on the ground. So it's also worth mentioning that this is going to be the fourth flight for this booster. This is actually the very first Block 5 booster that flew for, uh, back in 2018. It flew three times then and was expected to carry the in-flight abort test in you know the middle of last year. But unfortunately that uh, explosion back on April 20th yeah, that uh, sort of put, put a spanner in their works, but it will finally fly. The upper stage on it is not going to be a proper stage. It's going to have to have uh, the fuel, full fuel and oxidizer load, but it won't have a, an engine on it. That will just be a mass simulator. I sort of joked that, hey, if you've got this crazy booster, why not fill the upper stage tank with something cool and make a fireball in whatever color? I, I, I even suggested that Elon could use it as a gender reveal for, you know, the child that he's having with Grimes, but that's kind of ridiculous. But awesome too, really. So yeah, speaking of strange stuff, Yusaka Maezawa, the billionaire that is funding the development of Starship so that he can fly around the moon with a whole bunch of artists, has asked, will you come to the moon with me? Uh, they're advertising a TV show and they're looking for applicants who want to fly with him, looking specifically for women. It's going to be a dating game kind of thing. It's going to be selecting you know, applicants over the next few months and just narrowing it down for compatibility. Uh, yeah, this is obviously very weird. First of all, I don't like any of these dating shows, so I'm like, I'm not interested, but... Boy, that would be really weird if the first woman to fly around the moon was someone who won it in a competition, a dating competition. I'm sure the person will be magnificent in many, many ways, but uh, yeah. I don't know, this, this, there's a lot of people that aren't entirely happy with I certainly am not going to watch it, but I'm really curious to see what the results are. Of course, there's many people pointing out that Yusaka Maezawa was also the guy that was probably, he was probably the person that was planning to fly around the far side of the moon in a Dragon capsule launched by a Falcon Heavy before it was switched out to Starship. And again, that would be him plus, you know, guest. And presumably this was the same plan back then. I don't really know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know where to go with this. It's just a uh, way out of left field and it's not really science, so it's not my ballpark. But what is my ballpark? is the continuing development of Starship. And yes, Mark I obviously met its death with spectacular, well, the front fell off and flew across the road on a failed pressure test. Mark II at Cocoa Beach has stopped development as the team from there has been transferred to Boca Chica to work on serial number three. So it's not Mark III, it's serial number three. But before they built that, they wanted to do testing to make sure the fabrication techniques could handle the load. So they have a new bulkhead design which was being built over Christmas. Literally, Elon was tweeting out, like I think on Christmas Eve, that he had been working at late at night with uh, to develop the bulkheads. They used a couple of ring sections and the new rings are you know, five foot wide sheet and it's rolled into the, the nine meter circle with a single weld. So these two bulkheads, two ring sections, 
were all welded together to create, you know, something that would test all the welds. And then they did a pressure test, fully expecting that they were going to exceed the limits. So they had straps over the top to make sure nothing went flying. But more importantly, they filled it top to bottom with water because it meant that there was no gas in there to expand. When Mark I blew its top, it went off spectacularly because there was a lot of gas volume in there. They only had a very small amount of liquid. The gas expands, the liquid does not. So the test, I think they got up to like 7.1 atmospheres and on Twitter, uh, Elon said that they needed to get up to six, but they want to get it up to 8.5, which will be possible if they work on their, uh, you know, manufa their fabrication techniques. So, that that gives them a basically an extra margin of safety. They need six for perform to make it perform as designed. They need, you know, eight or nine to make it comfortable to put crew on it. So yeah, failing at seven atmospheres, if you think about it, like a nine meter wide uh, dome there, the pressure on that was about four and a half thousand tons. And so if you take that weld that was holding on the bulkhead, the one that failed. There was 1.6 tons of force on every centimeter of that weld. So just think about that. It just took one point to break. But yeah, it, it wasn't spectacular. You just saw some water spraying out and then it just kind of leaks out. And we saw images the next day showing the bulkhead had sort of collapsed in as the water drained out. And at this point, of course, once again, shout out to Maria. Mary, Boca Chica Mary, Nomad, La Padre, everybody that is delivering these uh, images to the community. You, you, these are the people you should be following if you want to find out more. So yeah, uh, they've been, since then they've been taking in a lot of hardware to help with their, their welding, uh, their fabrication. I saw like a water cutter that was uh, in one of the photos. There's new buildings, enclosures to make sure that they can do this in an environment where the wind isn't blowing away their protective gases. So uh, hopefully we'll, we'll start to fabricate a full-size vehicle again soon. Oh yeah, and finally, back to the regular Falcon 9. Ten, SpaceX nine, is now the eight, biggest satellite seven, operator, having performed its third Starlink four, launch. They have, three, well, that's them launched 180 one, satellites. I'm not sure how many of those are actually active. But one of the new batch has new dark coatings on them to improve or reduce the albedo, at least in the optical. So there's some discussion with astronomers. One of the other things they're doing is issuing the orbital elements before the launch and very soon after so that people can plan their observations and take measurements and make sure, you know, to figure out the actual impact. So there is some attempt at working with the astronomical community while everybody else is still concerned that it will destroy astronomy as we know it. I, I, I don't know where I stand. Obviously I'm ambivalent on this because I want good internet. I also want really good skies for astronomy and I don't see how to make both these things happen at the same time. You know, complex life that I have. And yes, Starlink, that was the fourth flight of that booster and it was recovered. I'm presuming they're going to reuse it again. They have failed to catch any other fairings since the, the first fairing catch. They now have two boats. One of them got damaged and the last time they went out they only had one. So they've not been really doing a great job at the fairing catch. I, I'm wondering how long they'll continue with this, but uh, I hope they figure it out. So yeah, uh, that's pretty much SpaceX. Just working like crazy, doing all sorts of cool stuff, I guess, and looking forward to a really big year. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. Thank <laughs> you.